Welcome to the All Saints Church in Brixworth. Exactly who the church was built for, why it was built larger than its present size, and exactly when it was built remains unclear. There is strong evidence to suggest that the building began life as a monastic community in the late 7th or early 8th century. In Anglo-Saxon times, Christianity, having been established in Kent with the arrival of St. Augustine, was moving north eastwards as monks founded many communities such as that at Lindisfarne, regarded to be one of the most important centres of Christianity. It is believed that a new community was established at Meadhampstead, modern day Peterborough, by monks from Lindisfarne, and it is this community that founded the monastery at Brixworth. Many visitors to the church wonder how it has managed to survive for so long. There is no clear answer, and it may be due to a series of fortunate consequences. Although at first the church was an important monastic centre, it quickly became a parish church at Brixworth, losing some of its importance and possibly keeping it out of the limelight in times of strife. Possibly much earlier than the 13th century, the structure was reduced in size with the removal of the porticuses and much of the western fore building. What survives from the original building is the main nave, the choir, the lower part of the tower and the sunken ambulatory crypt around the apse, much of which was built in 1865 on the original foundations. One certainty is that since the original construction, this church has seen many changes with regard to its use and architecturally it has been modified and adapted. Whatever the reason for its survival, we are fortunate to have such a fine example of Anglo-Saxon architecture at Brixworth. The first thing you will probably notice when you see the church is the tower at the west end. Early churches had no towers, and there was previously a two-storied entrance porch with compartments on either side. These were destroyed, but the small south door still remains. Later, the porch became the base of today's tower. The round Anglo-Saxon stair turret, one of four remaining in England, was added possibly in the 11th century. The upper part of the tower, from just below the clock face, and the tall spire of Clipson Stone crowned the building in the 14th century. At the east end of the church, you will see the polygonal apse. Most of it was built in the 19th century. In the early days, around the apse was a sunken ambulatory crypt, which could be entered from the choir inside or through an external doorway. On the north side of the apse, this blocked doorway, with the remains of steps leading down to the sunken ambulatory, can be clearly seen. Sometime during the 13th century, the largest south door has provided entry to the nave. In approximately 1200 AD, the Normans built the door within the Porticus Arch. It originally had a Norman porch, and although it was dismantled in the 19th century, it can still be seen in old pictures.
To stand in the nave today, it's awesome to think that Christians have been gathering there for over a thousand years. The nave measures 60 feet long, but was originally much wider with open arches on the north and south sides, leading to numerous porticos. These were possibly used as side chapels, but were totally abandoned before the Norman conquest. The west end of the nave was the original entrance to the church. Above the stone arch doorway there is a small block doorway. This may have been the entrance from an upper floor of the west floor building to a supported wooden gallery. This gallery would have protruded into the nave and may have been used as a viewing chamber for bell ringers. The triple arch window above was possibly added at the same time as the stair turrets in the 11th century. Rather unceremoniously, it cuts right through the door arch below. Brixworth is an early example of the introduction of this central space separating the nave from the apse and sanctuary with the main altar. The choir, measuring 30 feet long, was intended for the choir and clergy and was kept separate from the nave by a screen. The opening of this Anglo-Saxon arch has an impressive archway of rused Roman bricks and leads from the choir into the apse. It dominates the east end of the church. Before the 19th century restoration, the upper part of this arch was blocked by some sort of solid partition above the screen. The Lady Chapel was added during the 13th century. A 15th century screen was placed across the entrance by the Reverend Watkins during extensive restoration work in the 1860s. Originally much wider, the screen was positioned across a large triumphal arch leading to the apse. The screen was repainted in the early 20th century in its original colours to serve as a war memorial. The inscription in Latin is the opening words of Psalm 98. Exergit Deus Dissipanta Inimici. Let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. The chapel itself was added at the request of Sir John de Verdun, whose tomb is in one of the moulded recesses on the south wall, and its original function would have been as a chantry chapel, where Mass would have been celebrated for the soul of the deceased. The nave north wall windows and the three in the apse are memorials to relatives of Reverend Charles Frederick Watkins, Vicar of All Saints from 1832 to 1873. Those in the nave south wall are in memory of Mrs. Isabella Bevan of Brixworth Hall. The choir north wall has two large pointed three light windows. The one on the right is known as St. Luke window the stonework of which was inserted between 1842 and 1863. The date of the glass is not known. The window on the left dates from the early 14th century, and its sill cuts into the brick arch of an original round-headed doorway, now blocked. The donor of the glass, William Wood, was one of the lords of the manor and a benefactor of the church, whose family has been associated with Brixworth since the middle of the 18th century. Much of the fabric of the church comprises reworked Roman bricks. As you leave the church through the main south doorway, you can see the Anglo-Saxon St. John's Eagle carved into what remains of a Roman stone cross as used in the original building. The eagle may have been placed here by the builders of the Norman porch. It was thought a nearby Roman villa may have been the source of the brick, but further research suggests not. At the base of the pulpit can be found part of the Anglo-Saxon cross shaft with a faint sign of carving. 
It is the lower portion of the 10th century cross and was found in the vicarage garden in 1897. It is just possible to make out the greyhound in the lower decorated panel. The animal has long legs, a slight body and is facing left. The head is missing but the design is typical of the period and similar to a large number of crosses carved in the Scandinavian or Viking style found in Mercia or Northumbria. The Brixwood relic has quite an involved history. During some wood panelling remodelling work in 1809, a small, heavy, carved and decorated stone box was found beneath the middle window of the Lady Chapel. When it was opened, a wooden box was discovered containing a fragment of bone wrapped in cloth. The wooden box had an inscription believed by some to be the initials of Thomas Battenden, the last Chantry priest, and the date when he had the relic bricked up in the wall of posterity was around 1550. In some early parish documents, there are several references to the Guild of St Boniface and in wills an account referring to the festivities around St Boniface's Day, the 5th of June. This connection with an early Christian who was born in Crediton, Devon, then travelled to Europe as a missionary and later became the Bishop of Mainz is a bit suspicious. Nevertheless, it is known that St Boniface was martyred on a missionary journey to the Netherlands and that someone acquired his throat bone and brought it to Brixworth. It is considered important in those early times to have some connection with a known holy person. The reliquary was displayed for many years above the pulpit, but increased vandalism and theft from the building in recent years forced its removal to a safer place. The feast of St Boniface is still commemorated today, with the annual church fete always held on the first weekend in June.